Hello there, I'm just making this video to answer a few questions about the evolution simulator I posted a little bit ago. So right now we are starting with a blank map and the first thing you're gonna do is generate a new map. So you know, turn down the water height a bit. Uh, maybe this, this should actually be roughness, not smoothness. Um, yeah, make a tiny map. You know, it's very tiny. Um, if you click it again, you get a different seed. So it happens over and over again. Uh, all right, yeah, that's probably good. All right, next you spawn some cells. These cells have a very simple default code, which is located in starting gene.bin in the program's directory. It is very simple. The cell just eats, then it moves in a random direction, and if it has over 250 food, it will birth a cell, giving away 20 of its food to the new cell. That is pretty simple. Right. If you act, click export, you can export the cell to export.bin, the, uh, the gene, and if you overwrite starting gene.bin with that export.bin, you can have the new cells when you start a new map and hit spawn. They will be whatever that cell was that you exported. You can see some basic data down here, age, food, cell. Uh, this is real-time seconds, so it's not, as you can see, it's paused right now, so this number doesn't mean much the amount of bytes that its gene length is, and how many cells it has given birth to. This is speed. Uh, it Basically, you can go from one frame per second, second, five frames per second, all the way up to unlimited, which, with only a few thousand cells on this smallest size map, may very well be, like, you know, one, two thousand frames per second. It's pretty efficient. Uh, this is how many mutations out of a thousand. You can go all the way down to just one in 10,000, you can go all the way up to 1 in 1,000, all the way up to about 99 out of 100 cells having a mutation. You know, so pretty much all cells will mutate, or pretty much none. Actually, you can go all the way down to zero. This is the max age cutoff for when they'll just straight up die. Uh, you got a cell counter. It's supposed to spawn 5,000. I don't know why 7 did not spawn. Some basic info here. Uh, I only started making this interface uh, yesterday morning. So there's going to be a lot more buttons later on, you know, so I just got to, you know, figure out stuff to add to the interface. You'll probably be able to move around cells and manually edit their genes and whatnot. That will probably be pretty cool. Save will basically make a bin file with every single cell on the map having their genes exported to one big file. Usually it's a few megabytes. Uh, you're not really going to use that because there's no way to load back the data yet, so, you know, it's kind of useless. Anyway, I am going to start up the simulation, and you can see the new cells are pretty shitty at living, but they will eventually, especially since I have 10% of all newborn cells mutating, they will mutate. So, you know, you've got all these weird different families of cells, usually one cell mutates, and it goes in a slightly different direction, but still mostly random, and it creates a cluster which expands as it goes outwards. That's what you're seeing. These pig cells here are cells that if you look at their code, you can see that the part where they're supposed to give birth has been overwritten, so they never give birth, they never lose any of their food from it, so they just continue growing. Um, that's pretty much. There's not a lot in the first few seconds of this that you're really going to see, but uh, I don't know, you can just watch it for a few minutes. The, the evolution is mostly behavioral, as you can see it's a script. The only real visual attributes that can change on the cells right now are their size to indicate how much food they've stored, and their hue, which will change what color they are. The default hue is of course green. Uh, even if a cell has no code for changing the hue, it will still pass on whatever hue it happens to be to which child cells. Um, eventually, I probably will add body parts and stuff, and I will add the ability for cells to interact with each other. But for now, they can basically sense the environment around them and choose whether or not to eat, move in a particular direction, give birth. Uh, they have memory that they can set and access. Um, yeah, so that's about it for this video. There's not a lot to it, but I have uploaded the application to the forums if you would like to try it out for yourself. Uh, if you let it run long enough, you will see some pretty crazy things. But it does take a few minutes.